Okay. So seeing the presence of the quorum, I'm calling this meeting of outreach communications and appointments to order at 9.33 a.m. Uh, this meeting is being uh, video and audio recorded on Zoom. Uh, this is our first attempt to do a Zoom meeting of the council. OCA is sort of the guinea pig this morning before tonight's meeting. Uh, so a couple things I just wanted to throw out there. Uh, for those committee members who are here. I think the best way, the simplest way to go about doing this is to have everyone on mute until you're ready to talk uh, so that we don't have background noise. So if you are not currently speaking, I'm gonna ask you to be muted. If at any point in time you wanna say something, uh, I'm gonna ask you to raise your hand and then I can call on you. I think that's the easiest way to keep this organized and simple. Uh, especially for the video and audio recording. So if you have something to say, if you want to make a comment, if you have a question, uh, please click the raise hand button. I will see that and then I can call on you and unmute you. Uh, but otherwise, I am going to ask you to, uh, if, if you are not, uh, if I'm not calling, I'm gonna ask you to be muted. Darcy, I have two things for you. What's, what's happening here? Darcy? Okay, we'll figure that out later. Um, okay, so with that, we will start with our agenda. So the first thing is announcements. Uh, I have two announcements to make. The first is with regard to our minutes. So as we noted, uh, or as I noted in our last meeting, uh, we were dreadfully behind um, in minutes. And so I, as I said, I would spent spring break going through, uh, all of our minutes for the past nine months or so, uh, and updating them and making sure that they were ready to be posted. And so, uh, having done that, um, I sent all of the minutes to Athena, who uh, in all of the many, many, many things that she's been having to do, uh, was able to get them up on our website. And so our minutes are now current through our February 24th meeting. Um, and so all of the minutes are up on uh, the OCA website and they are all up to date in our SharePoint. And so if at any point you need to see the minutes, they are now all there. Uh, at our last meeting, we also agreed that we would switch how we were gonna do minutes. Um, and so instead of me approving them, uh, we said that we would approve them by consensus as part of the committee, so we can do that later, but I did have them up uh, in the packet, but we are all caught up on minutes. The second announcement I wanna make is that the last time that we all met on March 9th, we declared that the pool of applicants for the Zoning Board of Appeals is sufficient to proceed to interviews. Uh, I then sent out a poll to the applicants uh, to figure out uh, what would be the best time to hold these interviews. And uh, so there are two announcements associated with this. Uh, one is that in response to reaching out and trying to schedule a time, two of the applicants have withdrawn. Uh, and so our pool is the same as last time, minus two. Um, they did not give particular reasons. They both just said that having thought about it, uh, they were reconsidering at this time. Uh, and so our pool is too smaller than it was when we last met. Uh, the second thing is I am still waiting on one applicant to confirm a date for the interviews. However, at this point, it is very likely to be April 16th. Uh, that was the soonest I could do it that uh, was a uh, a time that all applicants who responded to the poll could meet um, and that also would give that 14 day notification period. Remember that we needed to give interviewees per our process 14 days notice before the interviews. And so I have not scheduled interviews yet, um, but it is very likely that the interviews will be April 16th. I am just waiting on uh, one other person to confirm that that time works for them. Uh, are there any questions about either minutes or about the ZB interview scheduling? Okay, so seeing none, I will move on to 
agenda item three, which is development of ZBA interview questions and protocol. And so, in order to get these set up, um, we are going to look at two different documents. And so the first document is on, the first document is, sorry, in our packet. It is the OCA report to Town Council 127. This OCA report uh, was the one that accompanied our planning board interviews. And, Darcy, did you have a question? I didn't see a, a hand. I think you're muted still. I can't hear you. Are you, you, are you muted? Can anyone hear Darcy? Darcy, it, it sounds like your audio is off. Can you check your yeah. speaker? Um, Evan, we might want to just pause real quick and just do a quick check that all the committee members can hear and be heard. Darcy, you might want to exit the meeting and rejoin to see if that will restore your audio connection. Athena, do we wanna pause the recording for the test or do you wanna keep it going? I think we're still recording. George and Alyssa, can you confirm that you can hear us and we can hear you? George, Alyssa? I thought we were just testing Darcy. Yes, I was fine. Okay. Yeah, we just want to make sure that it works for everyone. George? Oh, geez, I forgot to unmute myself. I'm here. <laughs> okay, great. All right, so we're just waiting to make sure that it works for Darcy. And thank you, Athena, for pointing out she had a question. I, I've been looking at the panelists, but I didn't see a hand. I just added Darcy as a panelist. Darcy, can you hear us? Are you? Can you hear me? All right. Yeah. I can't see you, but go ahead. Um, anyway, um, I just wanted to bring up that um, we had decided at the last meeting that we're going to approve minutes. So we need to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Uh, so I addressed that at the beginning of the meeting. I said that uh, we agreed uh, at the last minute meeting that we would going forward do minutes by consensus and I said we would do that at the end of the meeting. Oh, at the end of the meeting. That's what okay. I said, yeah. Uh, okay, so back to uh, interview questions, uh, which is the main purpose for our meeting today to develop the interview questions for um, the ZBA interviews. So in your packet, you have two relevant documents, uh, well, we have many relevant documents, but two in, in particular. So one is the 127 OCA report to the town council. This was the one that detailed our planning board decision. And on page 12 of that document are the interview questions for planning board. And on page 10 is the selection guidance for planning board. Uh, and then you also have a document titled questions submitted by counselors for ZBA interview questions. As you recall, we solicit questions from uh, the rest of the council to see if they have suggestions 
uh, we had replies from a couple counselors, and so their recommendations are in that document. Uh, so what I think we'll do is the same thing that we did for the planning board interview questions, which is we'll start with the original adopted questions, the ones that we used for the planning board, and go through those first um, to see if we want to keep any of those, discard any of those, change any of those, and then we will go through uh, the questions that are submitted by counselors. And so if you could have in front of you, or I guess I can also share my screen so it's up on the screen for everyone. Um, Okay, so we have the questions for the planning board interview. And so the first thing I want to do is make sure is go through these and just see if we like these, um, if there's any others that we want to add, if there's any that we want to uh, remove. And so the first question that we had for the planning board uh, was why are you interested in serving on the planning board so do we want an opening question that is why are you interested in serving on the zba and it looks like as i'm sharing my screen i am not able to oh here we go okay never mind so Opening it up, um, raise your hand if you want to speak. Do we want to have an initial question that's just, why are you interested in serving on the GBA? Okay, no one's saying anything. So why don't we do it this way? If you are, if you want this question changed, or removed, um, can you please raise your hand and speak? Otherwise, I will assume that we are going to keep a question that says, why are you interested in serving on the ZBA? OK, so seeing no hands, then I am going, we're going to maintain question one. Why are you interested in serving on the ZBA? Uh, question two is, what is your relevant expertise and or experience? Uh, so do we feel like this is a relevant question to maintain? Alyssa has her hand up, so I'm going to unmute Alyssa and ask her to speak. Alyssa, can you? Yep. yep. It's funny how much I hate Microsoft, yet I found Teams much more intuitively obvious than Zoom. Anyway, um, for question two, I think the input that we got that you share that's in our packet for today, I think item two could be revised to reflect some of that input. Um, it, you know, it, it's rather detailed because they were the person, the people were trying to explain what they meant by the question, but I think that it could be refined to include some of that language. Okay. Um, so perhaps what we should do, because you're right, I think all four submitted questions sort of touched on this relevant expertise experience to some extent. Um, we could we could acknowledge we'll have some variation of that question, but perhaps circle back to that when we hit counselor questions. So why don't we do, why don't we put a placeholder on two and come back to see if we want to refine based on what our colleagues on the council said. Uh, question three might be similar. Uh, what important perspective do you feel you bring to this body? Um, does anyone have any thoughts, comments on whether or not we want to maintain that question? Please raise your hand if you have a comment, want that question discarded um, or went it altered. Okay, Alyssa. I think we can throw it out depending on what we do with two because I think it was it was more important when we were using a more generic question. Okay. Other thoughts on Alyssa's 
a statement that perhaps we can throw it out. George, can you unmute yourself? George, you're still muted. And it says I'm muted by the host. Uh, you're, you're, I can hear you now, so. Okay, thank you, I'm sorry. No worries. Um, this is awkward, but I think we're doing the best. Um, it, uh, I agree with Alyssa that um, depending what we do with two, I don't really see what three would accomplish. Um, the whole idea of perspective raises questions as well. Um, I like the focus of some of the questions that have been given to us by counselors. Um, so I think I'd like us to, uh, to wordsmith this if we can do it in this somewhat awkward situation. But um, I, I would like to see three either removed or, or uh, made more focused. Okay, so this is perhaps another situation where uh, as we're going through the counselor submitted questions, we might return to this. Okay, seeing no other hand, so we're gonna be returning to questions two. Uh, Alyssa, go ahead. I'm sorry, this is a technical question. Yeah. Following up on my whining earlier. Um, when you share a screen, which looks fantastic at my end, which is great, I can't seem to figure out how to get to any of my other stuff anymore, like how to shrink it down a little bit so that I can go look at the document that's in our packet at the same time, even though I know that people run into that problem all the time on Zoom because they share things they don't intend to, but I can't figure out how to make this screen smaller. Really sorry for the technical problem. Um, so if, if someone from IT could answer that, because I, I know how to do it from my role, but I don't have, uh, I, the host view might be separate. Alyssa, you should be able to hover over your main screen and then up in the upper right hand corner, it, there's a button that says exit full screen or you can press alt and F and it should take you out of full screen mode and then you can access other documents while you're zooming. Um, nope. <laughs> I, I got an email. I know the theory, it's just not working, but that's fine. That, as long as that's what I was supposed to be doing, I get it. I got a message that Dar Darcy's having some technical issues too. Can okay, um, Darcy, can you um, unmute yourself and just let us know what what's happening on your end? Darcy, I see you're unmuted, but I can't hear anything. Hi, uh, can you hear me now? Yep. Um, yeah, I just um, have never been able to get the picture of the meeting, um, and I don't have any access to my microphone or anything. Um, so uh, I've been on a ton of Zoom meetings over the past couple of weeks, but this is the only Zoom meeting that I have not been able to figure out. Um, so, so what can you see? Um, I see my, my desktop. So you can't see my screen? You can't see the interview questions? No. Okay. Um, but we can hear you at least, so that's one thing. Right, I, but I can't like raise my hand or answer, you know. Do you have a Zoom window open, but you can't, there's no ability to do anything? I don't, uh, I've gone to the start menu to try to go to Zoom and start Zoom and that doesn't do anything. Um, so I started out with the link that was in the agenda. Mm -hmm. And, um, I did have have the picture of the meeting for a little while, but then I lost it in my attempt to try to figure out how to get my microphone working. Oh, I lost it when I left the meeting because I was asked to leave the meeting and then I left the meeting and now I haven't been able to get back in. So Darcy, when you, when you were in the meeting before, there were two different participants that were labeled Darcy Dumont? Yeah, so one of them is still there. 
<laughs> yeah. So what was what was the difference between the two? Because in the other one you were able to see, but we couldn't hear you. In this one we can hear you, but you can't see. I, if I knew the answer to that, I would fix it. Um, sorry, I just keep going back to try to start Zoom and it asked me to join a meeting and sign in. Um, okay, I, I, uh, do any of the members from IT have any recommendations about what might be happening with Darcy? Uh, Darcy, this is uh, this is Serge from IT. Um, what I can do is uh, um, we can connect. I can, apart from this meeting, I can connect to your machine uh, using built-in Windows tool and, and take a look if that if that's okay. Right now. Um, if 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 it's a good time, if um, it, it should only take a few minutes. I just want to see what you're seeing um, and and uh, go from there. Right. That's fine. Um, okay. Do you mind just uh, putting your uh, 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 contact number in the chat so I can give you a call that way. Chat is not listed here. Oh, okay. wait a minute. Yes, it is. Never mind. Okay, um, perfect. Not sure how to. Um, why don't I just email it to you? <laughs> if you, yeah, if you don't mind, if once you email it to me, I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a call right away. Uh, and this is Sean? Uh, this is Serge. Serge, okay. All right. Um, I'll probably send it to Sean so you can get it to, because I don't. That's know. fine. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll connect. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay, so Darcy, you can at least hear us, correct? Yes, I can. Okay, so you just can't see us. Um, so we can either pause the meeting if they're going to do that now, or we can continue because Darcy, you can hear us and you can just let us know when you have a question. Uh, okay, just then leave my mic on. Thanks. Yep. Um, and Darcy, because you can't see the screen right now, we are on the, uh, in the packet, uh, the OCA 127 report, which includes uh, when we're on page 12, which is the uh, planning board interview questions. So we are on question four. We've agreed that we're gonna return to question two and three after we go through the counselor comments. And we, had, we agree that we would keep question one. So, Question four is tell us, tell us about an experience you have had collaborating with a group. Uh, does anyone have any interest in modifying or removing this question? I just want to note what I noted in my email to you, which is that I would like to keep the question three, which I know you already talked about, but I wasn't part of that conversation. Okay, well, so we're gonna go back to question three after we go through the counselor comments. Um, so I see no opposition to retaining question four, which is an experience you had collaborating in a group. So then I, we will maintain that. Uh, question five is not relevant to the ZBA. And so that one is, uh, unless someone has another opinion, um, we will be discarding question five, since it is particularly about the planning board. Sorry. Okay. Hello. So Darcy, I'm just gonna mute you while you're on the phone. Okay. Um, questions six and seven. Now, uh, these two questions, uh, when it came to the actual interview, there was a lot of opinion about these two questions because they both were able to be answered as yes or no questions. I know some people on the committee and in the council felt 
like it was actually useful to see if someone just gave a yes or no. Some people thought that it was uh, a good thing if someone just said yes or no, it showed that they were able to be concise. Other people felt as though it was a, um, they would have liked more fuller answers. So I think the question before us was section six and seven is, do we feel like they're important questions to ask? If so, are we okay maintaining them as questions that in theory could just be answered as yes or no questions? Um, and three, uh, if we are going to maintain them and we don't want them to be yes or no questions, is there a way to modify them in some fashion? And so I see a hand from Alyssa. So Alyssa, if you could go ahead and unmute yourself. So I believe that we could alter it to say something like, this is rough, but um, describe why you are comfortable working under open meeting law, where all blah, 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 blah. And then a possible answer is, because I'm very familiar with the requirements of open meeting law and I think they're important, or I don't understand them at all, but I'm willing to learn, or something is what I was looking for as an answer. So maybe describe is what we're looking for. Okay. I also see George's hand up. So George, if you could unmute and give your comment. I, I definitely think, I'm sorry, I think seven should go. Um, I don't really, I think it's just a waste of our time. Um, with six, um, I'm wondering if, if we can wordsmith some of the suggestions from the counselors, um, whether we can also get rid of it as well. Um, I really don't feel it tells me much as it stands, even with Alyssa's suggestion, which is a good one. Um, maybe she's, I think she's looking for something um, important, but I, I just, I don't know. I felt like these did not really give us any insight. I'd rather, um, I would want to keep the number short and I'd like the words. Um, so um, I, I would be happy getting rid of six and seven, unless we can come up with something really good for six. Okay. Uh, so let's, let's, uh, Alyssa, how do you, can I ask directly how you feel about question seven? I think seven can go because we're giving them the handout, which of course is actually a separate conversation because it hasn't been updated to indicate that we have in fact updated the zoning bylaw to, um, since we wrote that a year ago. But at any rate, um, since it's on the handout and they're all, we know they all have the handout, it's not like we were just checking to see if they went and found it themselves, then it, you know, they should be taking themselves out of the running. Hopefully it's something you also touched on when you spoke with them, if they said, you know, is it really on Thursdays or you know, whatever. Um, I think that the handout covers it. Okay. Uh, Darcy, can I get, uh, so we have, uh, Two committee members who are supportive of striking question seven. Can I ask if Evans asking me a question? <laughs> uh, question seven. Can I ask if um, Alyssa and George support discarding question seven? Can I ask your opinion? Could you read me the question? Of course. Uh, question seven is: Are you comfortable with the time commitment and committee meeting schedule on the provided handout? Um. And those, Alyssa and George want to discard it? Uh, yes, with the feeling that it's on the handout, that if they're not comfortable, they should have already uh, pulled themselves out. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So it sounds like, thank you, Darcy. Why don't you mute me again? <laughs> okay. <laughs> it sounds like we have consensus to discard question seven. So then that was the easier one. So let's go back to six. So. Uh, George is supportive of discarding six. Alyssa, you want to maintain it, but modify it, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, and can you just talk about, can you just give a reason why you think this is important question versus uh, seven? So 
I know that in theory, everybody's supposed to understand open meeting law, but it was clear when I came onto the council that many of my fellow counselors were unfamiliar with the basics of open meeting law before they got put onto the council. So I'm trying to get people to do a little homework to understand that. And I know of a, <clears throat> an apoc I mean, I can give an apocryphal stories about people who've served both on committees and as chairs who thought they understood open meeting law, who alleged they understood open meeting law, but then thought it was totally fine to do various things that were in conflict with open meeting law because they just thought they were ridiculous and inefficient, like not being able to decide things over email before you got to a meeting. So I'm just trying to get at the fact that since, particularly because this like planning board is such an incredibly important legal decision that people are making, that they understand they can't get together outside of the meeting to work all this through. That stuff they do outside the meeting, and the handout touches on this, I think, um, is with staff as opposed to with each other, because it's it's a comp it's complicated work they're being expected to do it's the kind of thing human nature would ask you to talk to your colleagues about but you shouldn't do that outside of a posted meeting okay and so george you were supportive of removing this question can i just ask if you could um explain your rationale a little bit more and then i'm going to turn it over to darcy okay i I agree with Alyssa, this is really important. It, it just seems that in the context of an interview, um, while it might give us some, might give us some insight into somebody's knowledge or lack of knowledge, um, it just seems like a, a very difficult, it just seems like not the appropriate setting to try and, because we can't do it back and forth. We can't say, well, wait a minute, you know, that's not right. Um, and people could simply make mistakes. I mean, they, I understand someone not really understanding this. As Alyssa pointed out, many of us, when we entered this position, um, really didn't understand it. Um, and I don't think that should be disqualifying for us, but it did mean we had to learn and we are still learning, I think, to some degree. So I just feel like it's an important issue, but it has to be dealt with through education. And also I think some of the other questions will give us a sense of somebody's maturity and ability to, to listen and so forth. Um, this one, um, I, I just feel like even if we just don't have the, it's not, we're not in a situation where we can just, you know, continue to pursue the question. We just, all we can do is ask it. And um, so I feel like there are other ways to get at um, what makes a, a good candidate um, in some of the uh, questions submitted by counselors and some of the things that we have up above. Um, I just feel this is, um, it's important, but I don't see how an interview is a situation where you can really get at it. Um, given all the subtleties and complexities, somebody could be completely confused about it and yet be an excellent candidate. Um, they just need to be enlightened. They need to do, um, they need to learn some things. Um, so uh, I guess I still feel that we should just drop it. Okay, uh, I see Alyssa has her hand up. Before I, before I ask you to speak, Alyssa, I see Darcy is reconnected in a slightly different format. Darcy, can I ask, do you have an ability to both speak and uh, see us? Darcy, are you there? Yes, I am back. Okay, and can you see this my screen now? Yes. All right, beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I appreciate your patience. Um, so I'm not sure when you cut out exactly. So we're currently discussing question six, which is, are you comfortable working under open meeting law? Uh, where all discussions and decisions are done in meetings posted at least 48 hours in advance and open to the public. Alyssa would like to maintain this question, um, but alter it to say describe why you are comfortable so that it is not a yes or no question. Um, George would like to discard this, uh, feeling as though um, it's not necessarily an important question to ask during an interview. Um, uh, I, I'm, Alyssa has her hands up, but I just want to hear briefly your thoughts on this question since you haven't had an opportunity to speak on it yet. Thank you. Um, I uh, am still on the phone with IT, FYI. Um, okay. And um, the I, my my feeling would be that it's not necessary. That I, I would also discard it, um, just because you know it's important, but it's not necessary as an interview question in my mind. Okay. So Alyssa has her hands up, so I'm going to ask Alyssa if you could unmute yourself. 
So I think there's just a philosophical difference here that isn't going to be resolved because I have a problem with the way several conversations take place outside of posted meetings that are not within the spirit, but perhaps within the letter of open meeting law. So I do come at this from a different perspective. Um, perhaps what I'm concerned about most is that as we adapt some of the input that we receive from counselors that talks about how to get along with people, how to interact with people on a, in a difficult situation and work collaboratively, that could easily sound to people like, two of us should get together at the coffee shop and work this through. And then a different two people should get together at a coffee shop and work this through. And that's not how you collaborate on these difficult conversations. So maybe it's just a matter of some turn of phrase in the other part about how everybody's going to be working hard on these things together. Because unlike some of the other things we can do as assignments, you know, outside committee work, mm -hmm. this is not stuff that they can be working on outside of their ZBA meetings with anybody other than themselves and a staff member. And it's really not okay for two of them to get together and trying to figure out how something works. So if you could just stay unmuted, if, are you, I guess I'm curious if, if achieving your objective could be done through an, an introductory statement to the applicants versus a question we ask them? Or do you feel like they need to be able to articulate something? funny that started making spaces instead of unmuting me um <laughs> it could <laughs> all these little tricks you learn oh, right. it could be a preface because you know amherst right like, we like to have long preceding parts before the question um yes, of course <laughs> it, we were trying really hard to avoid that but actually if it could be a preceding thing i would be totally comfortable with that and we could also include for example the thing about time commitment we know you all read the handout right that's part of the speech we know you all read the handout we know you're comfortable with the time commitment we know you understand that open meeting law is complicated and that you can't work on stuff outside of meetings um now here are your questions okay so so it could all of those things that we're discarding could in theory be an introduction to the interview questions themselves exactly Okay, George, you have your hand up. Could you unmute yourself? I think this makes sense to me, what um, both of you just suggested. <clears throat> My thought earlier before Alyssa was speaking was that um, with some of these other questions that we might be wordsmithing that come from the counselors, you could always preface it with given the requirements of open meeting law or given the restrictions of open meeting law, that could be uh, something you could insert um, just to, to raise that flag, but um, may not be needed at all and putting something up front um, is, it seems sensible to me. Okay. So with that, I think where we're at is agreement. If we're looking at the list of interview questions from the planning board, we have agreement to retain questions one and question four. We're gonna circle back to questions two and three and we are discarding, it sounds like, five, six, and seven, but working some of the content of six and seven into a, a preface to the interviews. Does anyone feel like that, that was incorrect? Okay, so with that then, I want us um, to, to look at the question submitted by counselors. And so again, um, the reason we're circling back to questions two and three about expertise, experience, and perspective is because we felt like they could be wordsmith to incorporate some of the questions that have, were submitted by our colleagues. So now I want us to turn to those. Um, and so you should see them up on the screen now. Um, so they're all rather lengthy questions. Um, so, and I, so they're, they're a little bit similar and I apologize. Normally I would have tried to group them, but I did not have time. Um, so let's go through them and discuss each one. And I think these each do need a discussion because they are not uh, our questions. And so the first question is, what experience do you have applying rules, regulations, or other types of guidelines to various situations? How do you determine 
whether a person or entity has met the requirements of the rules or if the person's or entity's request to not follow the rules should be allowed. Examples of applying rules could be experience in HR, applying personnel rules, referee and coaching, legal, uh, classroom rules, etc. My goal from this question is to get an idea of how an applicant might begin to assess applications and then decide whether to allow the waivers. So that was a lot. Um, if I could ask if anyone has any comments or thoughts on this question about experience applying guidelines or rules to various situations. Uh, Alyssa, you have your hand up and you can please unmute. I think um, partly it depends on how many questions we end up asking, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things that, that I, I'm hoping Darcy will take into account is like when we get to question three, that that might help address her perspective issue. But I can see asking the, the first sentence of this first question and then using some variation of the second question as a as another question, I wouldn't consider them substitutes for each other. But the reason I'm willing to have the first one just be the first sentence of the first one is that seems like a broader thing and see where people go with it. But then we'll be asking another question, um, you know, related. But rather than trying to ask two parts of the first question, I would just ask the first sentence of it and then move on to a variation of the second question, item two. Okay. Thank you, George, you have your hand up. If you could unmute yourself. Because it's so broad, um, I'd like to put a, a hold on it for a moment and see if we can get further with two, three, and four, because I think if we can get at least two good questions out of two, three, and four, one might prove not even to be needed. Um, so um, at, as it stands, it just seems, uh, it sounds odd to say maybe given what we're trying to do, but it just seems too open-ended, I think. Um, uh, why don't we go on? I would suggest going on to two, three, and four and see if we can focus those into short questions that seem to apply directly to the ZBA experience. And, and if we can come up with at least one or two of those that we agree on, then go back to one and see if we really need it. Okay, thank you. Uh, before we move on to two, three, and four, because I, I agree, I wanted to talk about all of these then but it seems like we have some support for the first sentence of one. Darcy, do you have any thoughts on this first question? Unmute yourself. Sorry. Um, um, I guess I would not want to eliminate a person that didn't have experience applying rules, regulations, or other types of guidelines. So I, I would like to get at what the purpose is of the question. Um, so I, yeah, I think all of these are related, one, two, three, and four. So I think that uh, we have to kind of look at the whole thing to see what, were these all provided by one person? No. Um, yeah, okay. I, I wouldn't want to require, I mean, this sort of goes to our criteria, which I don't think we've decided on, right? Our, our selection guidance? Selection guidance. We adopted it on uh, March 9th. Well, we did, okay. So it, this is part of our selection criteria, to my knowledge, right? So why would we be asking it? Okay, uh, Alyssa, you have your hand up. In listening to uh, both of those, I would say that we can just skip question one altogether and that um, question two, the first, very first part of it, I think is the way of addressing both more specific without having a more generic question in favor of perhaps what George was saying. And then in 
two, that first part also makes it clear that everybody in their life has had some kind of situation where you've had to deal with a rule or regulation. And so they will be able to come up with something associated with that. Whereas I can see that one might be a little dissuading to people as it stands. So maybe asking it more specifically as the first part of question two means that we don't need question one at all. Okay, so I think what I'm hearing from all committee members is that given some of the similarities between these questions, instead of going through them one by one, it might be useful to take them all as a whole and figure out what we want to pull out of this, if anything. And so uh, let's just look through all three questions and uh, all three remaining questions briefly. Um, and I'll read them just for the sake of the committee and for the public. Uh, so question two is, have you ever faced a situation where you disagreed with a rule or regulation but had to apply it slash follow it? Please explain your thought process in reaching your final action in this type of situation. My goal from this question is to ensure that even when a member does not like the bylaw, they will still vote in accordance with the bylaw. So even if you don't like the inclusionary zoning requirement, you will still vote to deny an application that doesn't comply with it. Or even if you don't like the setback requirements, you'll still vote to approve an application uh, that complies with them. Question three is, have you had experience at being a hearing officer or a member of a board or panel conducting an adjudicatory hearing, uh, been a party in such hearing or testified in an adjudicatory adjudicatory hearing? If so, please briefly describe that experience and tell us what you learned that will enable you to serve as an objective member of the ZBA. And the final one is, what is your understanding of the responsibility of a member of the Zoning Board of Appeals if an applicant for a special permit is proposing to do something that you don't believe is in the best interest of the town but is consistent with the current zoning bylaw? So why don't we, given that there are a lot of themes that cross over all of these, why don't we go through them um, as a whole? And George has his hand up, so I'm going to ask George to unmute himself and speak. I like to very much, um, and almost really the way it's worded. I think it is, as Alyssa suggested, it's broad enough. Everyone's had experience like this in their life, um, and they can take it any direction they want, but I think it would give us real insight. Um, and if they don't answer it at all, if they just brush it off or give a cursory answer, that would tell us something as well. So I like to very much. Um, I think three has potential. Um, I think it just needs to be uh, short a little bit, um, but, uh, and I don't like four. Um, I just think it's, 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 it's too much. It's looking for something and it's obvious it's looking for something and I don't like those kinds of questions. Um, uh, it, it should have enough uh, uh, space in it to allow someone to, they should feel comfortable answering it. They shouldn't feel like they're being put on the spot. Um, and yet it should be a question that still gives us something we wanna know. So I like two very much as it stands. Um, I think three has a lot of potential. I'd like to get rid of four. And I think we only need two at the most. So that's my thoughts. Okay. Any other thoughts? Darcy, Darcy, there should be a raise hand feature in the thing, just in case I don't always see your screen, but I can see you, so uh, go ahead. Where is the raise hand feature? Uh, it should be in the, if you have the participants tab open, you should see it there. Oh, okay. okay. Um, I think that we could deal with all of this by just maybe having a question that's, that uses the language in um, number uh, three, simply, um, uh, do you think you will be able to be a, you will be able to serve as an objective member of the zoning board of appeals? Okay. Alyssa, could you please unmute yourself? I thought we were trying to get rid of yes no questions. Obviously the person's just going to say yes and move on. So we could just say um explain how you will be able to be an objective member of the Zoning Board of Appeals. That makes, that makes sense to me and is, is really what these questions are trying to get at in just in more detail. So, you know, some way of meeting all of that. Okay, George, can you please unmute yourself? 
I guess I just like a question that gives the uh, the interviewee um, uh, uh, some freedom to talk about their own experience, but still gets at what we are looking for. Um, and asking somebody, you know, explain to me how you're going to be an objective member of the CPA. Um, I guess it could work, but um, uh, you know. Uh, I guess I'm a little uneasy with these kinds of questions, which say, "Tell us, you know, you know, whether you're going to be a good member or not." Um, uh, but anyway. Okay, so if I can uh, add some of my input here, um, what I'm seeing in these four questions is uh, the goal of right finding whether. Uh, the applicants would be objective members, whether they could look at things and apply regulations and rules, um, even if they disagree with them. I tend to agree a little bit more with George, I think, is if you just ask someone, can you explain how you'll be an objective member? I think you'll get a lot of uh, sort of abstract information about objectivity. Um, but I think if you say, have you ever faced or tell, you know, I don't actually like to have you ever, I would say, tell us about a situation you faced. Um, because that forces them, instead of talking in the abstract or the hypothetical, to actually uh, apply this idea of objectivity to a situation where it would have been difficult. And I, I, I personally always prefer interview questions that force them to give an example as opposed to talking in the abstract. But do we have agreement that we want to have some sort of question that assesses their objectivity? If we go back to um, the ZBA selection guidance, which we adopted, uh, oh geez. Uh, you know, we will note that it that we did adopt selection guidance that had understanding of the judicial function of the body, um, and so I think that we do want some question that gets at that part of selection guidance, understanding of the judicial function uh, of the body. And so uh, any thoughts on how we might want to word such a question pulled from these that are, have been submitted to us? We have a couple options on the table. Okay, so why don't we compare then, since no one has an opinion for once. Um, why do, George, please unmute yourself. Yeah, uh, it, this is difficult, I mean, I know. It, it's, um, I think when we're face to face, we can see when people are struggling to think something through and when they're just you know, rolling their eyes and uh, you know, or busy doing something else. Um, so, um, um, uh, maybe I should put my face on the screen so you can see it's agonized. agonized uh, <laughs> <laughs> I miss seeing your agonized face. Ryan, Ryan is struggling to, to think this through, um, and it, but it's just the nature of the beast. Um, so I, I yeah. Um, I like, we want to get at whether they understand what this body does. So maybe one thing you could simply do is ask them, you know, tell us a little about your understanding of what the CBA does. Um, you know, do you give us give us your sense of what you think um, the CBA does and 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 uh, what its function is, um, and then just listen to what they say. Um, I mean, the other is I like your point, Evan, that um, getting a, at least one question, if not all of them, getting at somebody's. Um, experience. So they speak from personal experience, which, you know, they, that, that's comfortable for them. And, but it also gets at what we're interested in. So I like questions that lead to, you know, where they talk about their own experience, they give us a concrete example. Um, but there's also, uh, I think, a place for them just giving us uh, our, our, our hearing from them what they, what they think this body is supposed to do. Um, and so maybe it could be just as straightforward as that. Um, you know, tell us what your understanding of the CPA is and, and what its function is. Um, could be one way of addressing that. I would like at least one question where they have to talk from their experience. And um, that's why I like two very much. And I agree with you, Evan, that phrasing it like, tell us about a situation is a much better way than have you ever, I think. So that definitely is a very good idea. 
I guess with three, I'm still struggling with the idea. Maybe it's a little bit too pointed, um, but uh, I've had experiences like this, but not everybody has, where you, you know, you've been party to something or you've attended a meeting, and I certainly could talk about that. Um, but that's focused particularly on an adjudicatory type situation. Um, so maybe you could just go with two, and then the other question would be something like, just tell us what you think this body is and how it works, and what's your understanding of the ZBA and its function. Um, we want to keep these questions short, I think. We want to, for our sake and for their sake. Um, so that's my thoughts, and I apologize. I, I don't know about the rest of you, but I, I, when I'm around you, I can, I can see what people are, when they're, where they're really struggling and where they're just saying, let's move on. And we don't have that here. So um, if you're ready to move on, that's fine. But um, those are my confused thoughts. So one thing I'll say is remember that, uh, thank you, George, for that. We are talking about this to some extent in the context of might these replace or supplement questions two or three. And so I think question two is what is your relevant experience, expertise and or experience? Um, and I think in this context, because the ZBA is a fairly narrow body and because we do want to get at that selection criteria about the judicial nature of the position, uh, some question that forces them to articulate um, their experience um, with some type of judicial decision would be useful. And then three is what important perspective do you feel you bring to the body? Um, to some extent that's about them, but it's also about what perspective they think the body needs. And so uh, perhaps George's suggestions of a question uh, about what's your understanding of what the ZBA does gets at their perspective, um, or it could be what it does or what it should do. Um, and then perhaps a question about having to apply a rule and regulation they disagree with gets at this relevant experience. So I think we're trying to figure out how to better articulate questions two or three within the context of our selection guidance and within the context of the questions that were submitted by our colleagues on the council. Um, so George has sort of proposed two separate questions, uh, one about understanding the nature of the ZBA and one about uh, there's basically some variation of question two. Are there any thoughts on that or otherwise on these questions? Um, I guess I uh, don't have any problem with the second question that George posed about what what the person's view is of what the ZBA does. Um, I think our our initial questions, what is your experience or expertise, is just a super basic question that we need to ask um, that is relevant to, you know, what is your experience, relevant experience and expertise? Why would we not ask that question? That seems so basic. Um, and I really don't like the idea that we, we are trying to get um, some, that we're preferring people that have experience with adjudicatory hearings. I don't think that's necessary at all. Um, because there's a world of people out there that could do a good job on the ZBA that, you know, haven't necessarily had that experience. Um, so, um, yeah, and I also like question three as it is. Um, so I don't know why we can't, if we want to add George's question about what, what is your view of what the ZBA does? Um, that's a good question. Okay, I'll see Alyssa's hand up. Alyssa, if you could unmute yourself. So, uh, following up on, yeah, this is really, really hard to do it this way. Um, I agree with the second part of what Darcy just said, but the first part really confused me because- can you, can, Wait, can you just articulate what was the second part that you're- So the second part about potentially adding a question, uh, not, to, not to mischaracterize, but along the lines of what George said about, you know, tell us how you see the role of the ZBA or how you see your role on it or want, you know, some variation of that, which is not exactly written down any place yet, but is perhaps getting at some of the things we're trying to get at. But the first part of what she said about, it's a basic question to say, what experience do you have? Which exactly conflicts with 
the earlier comment about how we don't want to keep out people who haven't had direct experience. So you can't ask the question that way. You have to ask if you're not trying to screen people out for not having experience, so they just have to say, I don't have any, um, is you have to ask it in such a way that describes something along the lines of what we were talking about, about you know having to follow rules you don't like, but because they're the rules rather than saying, what's your experience in, in this area? It's like, it doesn't matter what their experience is in that area, as Darcy herself said earlier. So it's, it, what matters is that their experience in dealing with a complex situation that they may or may not agree with, which we don't have to say it as you may or may not agree with, but to just ask the generic question about what is your experience automatically throws people who don't perceive themselves as having had experience in an adjudicatory way, as having any relevant experience to the ZBA at all, as we've all experienced when we've tried to recruit people to the ZBA who've said, I've never done anything like that before. And then you try and explain it in a more basic way. And then they go, oh yeah, I kind of get that. But when, when they just look at the face of it, they're like, that's a thing I've got nothing to do with. So why would I apply for that? Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think that one of the things um, I think I'm hearing um, agreement on is the, my discomfort with question three of the question submitted by counselors. Uh, have you had experience at being the hearing officer or a member of a board or panel conducting an adjudicatory hearing? That's very, very specific. Um, and then been a party to such a hearing. I'm not, you know, quite sure that could mean a lot of different things. Have you, have you been to court? Um, Maybe that doesn't get uh, an answer that we want. And so uh, I think that we, we aren't, in my opinion, yeah, so maybe I'll say not we, but I am not necessarily looking for experience with uh, formal adjudicatory hearings. Um, but what I like about questions one and two here um, is that it just says, have you ever had to apply a rule or regulation? So for me, if I'm thinking about if I was applying to the ZBA, uh, I've never, certainly never been involved in any type of adjudicatory hearings um, prior to, to my experience on the council, sure. Um, but having been a professor, I have to you know, apply classroom rules and regulations. I have to follow academic policies. Um, you know, when I worked for state government, I certainly had to apply rules and regulations, some of which I didn't agree with. So I think, I think um, getting away from that sort of formalized adjudic adjudicatory role and towards a general think about a rule or regulation that you've had to apply in the past broadens it to various professions, various experiences that people have. Um, and I think it still gives us an idea of what they're looking for, which I think is the goal of the question. And I think that's the type of experience um, that really is going to matter for the ZBA. So I actually quite like question two. Um, Alyssa, you have your hand up. Following up on that, Evan, and to make it clear, one of the, the, the way to ask this question is so that you can get an answer that says, you know, I really wanted to cut a student a break, but the academic policy said X, Y, Z, and I couldn't do it. In my soccer league, I wanted to enable such so-and-so to play, but for this technical reason, they weren't allowed to play or I worked for this government agency and had to apply these very specific rules. I think that the soccer, the classroom, the government agency are all perfectly equivalent in terms of possible ZBA service. And so asking the question in such a way that people will feel like, oh yeah, I, I used to run the, the referees association and we had all kinds of complicated regulations that they would think of that as an answer as opposed to because they ever worked in an adjudicatory function in the way they think of adjudicatory function. Sorry, George, you have your hand up if you can please unmute yourself. It sounds from what I'm hearing from the rest of you that we're agreed that two, uh, that's the submitted one from the counselors is, is a goal and it gets at something important um, and we'll tell, we hope it will tell us something important. We like it. Um, where we're, I guess, struggling a little bit is at least hearing what Darcy said is question two on our sheet. What is your relevant experience, expertise and or experience? And, um, on one hand, I, I kind of think with Darcy, you know, that seems like a perfectly appropriate question. On the other hand, I think Alyssa makes a really good point that 
that it, it by its nature, it, it, it can, and perhaps probably does, scare some people away. And so, two, the one that is on the counselor sheet, um, allows someone who maybe doesn't have what they think of as this kind of adjudicatory experience, doesn't raise that issue at all. They just talk from their own experience and it gives us insight. So maybe we could get rid of two uh, from our, uh, our sheet um, and replace it with two from the counselor's suggestion. Uh, if we can agree on the wording, I think we're pretty close. Three, what I'm hearing and from Evan, I think, and maybe from some of the others, but let me just speak also from myself. This is a little bit, the adjudicatory aspect is just too specific and too, too off-putting. So uh, I was gonna suggest, sound like there might be some agreement that we would make that a more general question about letting them just tell us about their understanding of what the ZBA is and does. And we can word that, but it would be fairly short and sweet. And then we just sit back and listen. If we're, if we're at that point, um, it sounds to me like two on our uh, uh, the, uh, the planning board interview question number two could be stricken and we could insert two from the counselor question and then I would suggest three and then I think we, we, we have something um, and maybe it could still keep four, I don't know. Um, but um, that's what I'm hearing. I don't know what others are hearing. Maybe I'm missing something. So let me shut up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I actually per personally like the idea um, of asking a question of what is or what should be the role of the ZBA. And I actually think that would be a useful first question before even asking people to articulate why they're interested, because it sets off the tone of, well, what's your understanding of the ZBA? And that, that, that contextualizes everything else. Um, whether others agree, I don't know. But I, I actually personally like the two questions. Um, what is your understanding of the ZBA or what, what is the role of the ZBA or should be the role of the ZBA? Um, and then also the question about having to apply rule regulation. Uh, other thoughts, other comments? Darcy. Um, I just want to um, mention that I, I, I don't think that there was actual agreement that we should use that. Um, um question in number two on the question submitted by counselors instead of well at all and or that we should not use the number two on our initial list i as i said before <laughs> i it makes sense to me to ask the question um but just relevant relevant experience would would um, bring up whether or not they had done, you know, been in a similar situation where they could describe it. Um, I think it needs to be broader, you know, just like open it up. I'm interested in other experience that they have in addition to being in a, you know, something with regard to, you know, being in a good judicatory setting. Um, there are lots of other experience that they could have had that would be relevant. You know, if they're in the in the building trade or if they're whatever. You know, there are a lot of different things that would make their experience relevant to being on the ZBA. Great, thank you. Alyssa, you have your hand up. You can please unmute yourself. I disagree completely. I don't care if someone's in the building trade. What I care about is if they're in the building trade and they've had to deal with rules and regulations at the local or state level, or they've run the referee association for their kids' soccer team, or at one point they worked on a classroom. It, being in the building trades is irrelevant to the ZBA. What matters is whether or not they have had any experience at all in dealing with rules of any kind in a classroom or anywhere else. If they haven't, then I don't see how this is a good fit for them. So just telling me that they're in the building trades is not relevant. If you want to have it as an extra question, you know, that's like, that to me is why I think, to be clear, having someone from the building trades would be really interesting if they also have, can explain how they de dealt with rules or regulations in some area of their life. It would not be useful just because 
I've been a builder. It's like, well, have you ever had to deal with regs? No, that was always my boss's job. And no, I can't think of any examples. I don't want them on the ZBA. Okay, but I want to ask the question in a way that they can succeed. And when we say relevant, I don't think the average person is going to see what I see as valuable experiences as valuable for ZBA. And I don't want them to feel like they have to say, nope, I don't have any. Okay. Um, so I guess I'm, I'm thinking if we ask question two, and I think that the, uh, of the, sorry, if we, ask, if we ask question two of questions submitted by counselors, which I think the majority of us here like, and we also remember maintaining uh, question one, which is why are you interested in serving on the ZBA? Um, I'm wondering, Darcy, if the combination of those two, where they have to talk about why they're interested in serving, and then also give an experience of a time they've applied rules and regulations, which is from their personal or professional life. Um, if you feel as though the combination of those two questions would get at what would otherwise be answered in the question, what is your relevant ex expertise or experience? Uh, can you unmute yourself? Even muting the wrong mic. <laughs> um, uh, I uh, it doesn't, yeah, I, 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 the focus on whether or not they've had experience with applying rules and regulations, I, I, you know, I think it's a piece of what we should look at, but I don't see it as being the important piece. So, um, but I, I like George's question and adding that to the first question, why are you interested in serving on the planning board and, or, what is your what is your view of what the planning board does, and why are you interested in serving on it? I mean, not I mean ZBA, um, and uh, relevant ex expertise and experience. I mean, if you wanted to add a, a phrase after that, including any experience that you have with applying rules to anything. <laughs> that would be fine, but I, I think it, we need to have a broader question than just about what their experience is with applying rules. There, there may be people that are new that haven't had that much experience doing anything related to applying rules. Do we not want them on the ZBA? Uh, George, I see your hand up. Can you unmute yourself? Sorry, I didn't realize I was on mute as I was telling you to unmute yourself. Yeah, there was a silence there. I was really. <laughs> I was like, George, unmute yourself. But... <laughs> Definitely. <Yes. laughs> Just a very small point. I apologize that um, to Darcy's comments that whatever questions we come up with, each question should have a single focus. We shouldn't have. You know, what do you think about X and Y and Z? It should just be, even if it's, if it's even if it's a long sentence, it should be very specific as to what we're asking. So if we don't want to combine things, I don't think we want a railroad train. Um, we may still want to have, so that maybe with Darcy's point, we'll have separate questions, but it's just a technical point about questions. Let's, let's not have questions that have multiple parts. Um, you know, each question then would be separate. That's, a, that's my thought. Okay. Alyssa, I see your hand up. Could you please unmute yourself? I completely object to the concept of the word relevant because that's asking them to tell us to, to think through why they think their experience is relevant. I think that we should be more directive in terms of asking in a slightly different way, more along the lines of what question two on the submitted items works because we've learned since we wrote these questions some time ago. And that in answer to the question of, if we, there's somebody new that hasn't had any experience in applying rules and regulations, do we not want them on the ZBA? The answer is yes, 100%, we do not want them on the ZBA. If they can't come up with an example of some place in their life where they've had to follow rules or apply rules, then no, I don't believe they belong on the ZBA, period. So 
I don't want to, I want to cut them out for that, but I don't want to cut them out because they don't understand what we mean by relevant. So I'm just asking that we offer them some more information, whether it's through a variation of question two of the submitted questions or whatever that says, tell us about, describe, you know, along those lines, not what is your relevant. What is your relevant is not going to get us the answer I want to hear because I do want to hear about the soccer team. And if they can't come up with an example like a soccer team, then no, I am not going to appoint them. So I guess, Darcy, if I could ask you a question directly to try, try and see what you're getting at. So, I mean, my, the, the ZBA is a, their role is, is narrower than that of the planning board. Um, where we originally developed this question and, and mostly because it's an adjudicatory body. I guess I'm curious what additional experience you would be looking for from the question about relevant experience that does not have to do with applying rules and regulations. Um, I guess a person who um, has a um, different types of background where they would um, probably automatically be involved in that, like a lot of people who are in education or who are uh, um, lawyers or who are already really familiar with all the zoning um, uh, requirements and um, but who may not have served on a on an adjudicatory body uh, but you know they might be able to think of if you if you ask what is your relevant expertise or experience um, in serving um, uh, on a board like the ZBA or in a context like the ZBA um, it's the same thing wait what do you mean by that Because we're not talking about asking, have you served on a board like the ZBA? Well, we're asking if people have expertise or experience that would allow them to serve effectively on the ZBA, right? Well, that's what we're trying to get at, yeah. Um, so, What's your question of me? What other ex expertise or experience? So I, I guess if we have question, uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to make sure that we have a question that gets at what you're looking for. And so if we have question one, which is why are you interested in serving on the ZBA, where they could talk about you know their interest and their background, and we have a question that's specifically about uh, applying rules and regulations, which is the primary role of the ZBA. Um, what else do you think the question about what is your relevant experience, expertise or experience, what do you think that could bring out that would not be answered by the other two questions that would give you it relevant information that you're looking for to make a decision? Um, I, I guess just what the person has done over the period of their life, what their jobs have been, you know, what, what, whether their jobs are or their experience is or could be interpreted to be relevant to working in this role. Um, so to me, that's relevant, you know, to find out what they've been doing. Um, okay. Could it, um, how could it not be relevant? <laughs> that's, that's what I'm, you know, so, and it, not all of that will be about, you know, applying rules and regulations in an, adju an adjudicatory setting, you know, so. Okay. Uh, I'm going to, uh, Alyssa, your hand is up. I'm going to ask you to unmute and speak, and then I'm going to move on to a, a separate thing. Let me try and rephrase this. The pre-printed question back from the planning board days that's on our screen right now, what is your relevant expertise and or experience that Darcy and I are fighting about right now? So 
The reason I don't want to say relevant, I've said a million times, is because I don't think most people are going to think of those other examples, which I think are, in fact, extremely relevant. So that's why I don't want to ask the question that way. I agree that we want to elicit an answer that both Darcy and I will find useful. What I think this question is actually asked, this question is on the wrong piece of paper. What this question should be on is the, in some variation of our own personal notes or selection guidance. What is this applicant's relevant expertise or experience compared to the other applicants? It's more of a question that we ask ourselves as we're going through the interview and as we're making the decision, it's not a question to ask them directly. We want us to know what they're relevant, how we interpret what they've said, what's relevant that they have versus what the next person has versus what the next person has. Asking them directly this way is not the right way to go. This is an evaluative question. It's not an interview question. An interview question gets at all the things Darcy, George, Alyssa, Evan are looking for. It's just a matter of phrasing to elicit the information we're looking for. And then in our heads, we're on a little grid. We're marking relevant experience, zero, not well explained, incredibly relevant, et cetera. Okay. So I think that we could probably talk around all these questions for the next several hours, um, but I want to get to a point where we're actually making a decision. And so here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to put us on a five minute break. I'm going to stop the recording. I'm going to use that time um, to take all of the questions that at least someone felt would be useful and put them in a new document and that we can go on and we can make a final decision about the interview questions. Okay. All right. So with that, I'm going to put us in a five minute break and we will come back closer to 11 a.m. And that is 11. I am starting the recording again and we will return to our meeting. And so I'm going to put on the screen uh, what I think are all of the questions that there was interest in uh, having from all members, um, not all the questions we have consensus on, but all of the questions that there was at least interest from one counselor um, in retaining. And so I will put that on the screen now, um, and then we can go through them, hopefully, to make a decision. Okay, so you should see a Word document of the questions on the screen. Uh, hold on, let me just pull a couple of things up. Okay, so let's go through these, decide whether we want them and if they are worded as we want them to be. So question number one is a question, uh, some variation of a question that was recommended by George, uh, which is, what is your understanding of the role of the ZBA? Uh, so, is anyone interested in modifying or removing this question? If so, please raise your hand. Okay, seeing no hands, my. I will take that as no one is interested in modifying or removing this question, and so we will keep it there. The second question, I'm going to get, well, so now that we have a full discussion, we had agreed, there seemed to be consensus to maintain the question, why are you interested in serving on the CBA? Given the discussion we've had, is there anyone who is interested in removing or modifying this question? Please raise your hand. Okay, seeing no hands, I will assume by consensus we don't want this question. Question three is a question that has been pulled from, oh, sorry, Alyssa, please uh, unmute. Sorry, I was preemptively raising my hand. You weren't <laughs> with question three. I mean, once you read question three, then I'd like to be recognized. Okay, so question three is, have you ever faced a situation where you disagreed with a rule or regulation but had to apply it slash follow it? Please explain your thought process in reaching your final action in this type of situation. Is there anyone who would like to remove or modify this question? Alyssa. 
I was going to say, instead of making this two sentences, I was going to change the first part of it to describe a situation where you disagreed with a rule or regulation, but had to apply it or follow it. Describe, oh boy. Oh, there we go. A situation where you disagree with a rule or regulation that had to apply it. So is this what you're looking for? Yep. Okay. Y'all can see my changes on the screen, right? Okay. It's pretty amazing, actually. <laughs> it's actually almost more useful than what we usually do. Anyways, um, <laughs> Darcy. Are the applicants, did we decide that the applicants are getting the questions in advance? It's, a, it's part of our adopted process that the applicants get the questions in advance. Okay, so um, I, I don't like this question. I would remove it and I, I think that people aren't going to give us uh, answers. They'll be prepackaged answers that they figured out ahead of time that are not going to be helpful or relevant. That's my, and, and I, I actually don't, don't think it's a necessary question anyway. Okay. Uh, George, can you, I see your hand raised, can you please unmute yourself? I have to disagree here with Darcy. Um, I think this gets right at the heart of what you do on the ZBI without you know, bringing in adjudicatory or all the kind of language that might put people off. It simply invites them to think about a situation from their own experience where they had to apply a rule they didn't agree with. And I think that's something we really would like, I would really like to hear from people uh, what their experience with that has been without, I agree, putting them in a situation where they feel like, you know, well, gee, I've never been on an adjudicatory body, so what can I say about this? But I disagree with it completely. I think this is a question that's very important and kind of like with the planning board questions, we had one at least where it really got at the heart of what um, or at least very closely to what uh, you do a lot on the planning board at the heart of the ZBA is, is applying rules and regulations. And sometimes you're gonna have to do this even though you don't agree with it. And I'd like to hear very much what people's experience with this has been and what they just get a, see, a sense from them. So I disagree with her. This is an important question and we should. Okay. Um, so my sense of this is that we have, uh, and, and I personally have already voiced that I support this, so my, my sense of this is that we have three members who would like to maintain this question, um, and we have one member who would like to remove it. Um, so our options, uh, Darcy, you're still interested in removing this question? Uh, okay, so maybe the best way to do this is by uh, for this particular question is to have a vote on it so that I can uh, articulate this in the report to the council. Uh, so Darcy, would you like to offer a motion? Um, I move that we omit question three. Okay, so Darcy has moved uh, to omit question three on the document interview questions for the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, is there a second? Okay, so motion fails for lack of a second. Question four, what is your relevant expertise and or experience? Uh, so I will ask if anyone would like to modify or remove this question to please raise their hand. Alyssa, I see your hand raised. Could you please unmute yourself? We all know I hate this question. So if what, in looking at what we have left for our other questions, it looks like part of what we're trying to get at here and that we kind of lost from our planning board questions is a question about collaboration. That to me is something that's relevant to this particular board and, or any board for that matter. So rather than saying, what is your relevant expertise and or experience, I prefer to modify this into something around working effectively as a member relevant expertise and or experience in working as a member of a board, you know, where the board's 
majority is what decides something as opposed to just open-ended relevant ex expertise or experience. And then it brings that collaboration piece back in that we kind of lost when we got to this version of the questions. Are we, well, so question six is about collaboration. So are you com uh, recommending combining questions four and six? In a way, yes, in that it, it's not just experience collaborating with a group. It, to me, I, I mean, it could stand just as six, but that's what I'm actually looking for out of four instead of question four. I want someone to explain their, exp tell us about an experience they have collaborating with a group as that being the relevant expertise or experience that they have, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So I guess in all reality, I want question four to go away because six covers it. Okay. Uh, George, I see your hand raised. Could you please unmute yourself? What Alyssa just said, um, I think um, four needs to go away and six does the job. Okay. Other uh, comments, questions on question four? Darcy. Uh, just what I said before, um, I think this is probably the most, one of the most important questions and I think it's crazy not to ask it. Um, I do not understand in the least why we would not ask as what relevant ex expertise or experienced person has for being on this board. You know, it's so weird to me. but. We've already gone through it five times, so I would definitely vote to keep this question. I would want to okay. hear what people have to say about their life experience and why it, why anything that they've done is relevant to being on this board. Okay, uh, Alyssa, I see your hand raised. Could you unmute yourself? I move to remove question four. Okay, there's been a motion to remove question four. Is there a second? Second. Okay, so there has been a motion to remove question four. What is your relevant experience, expertise and or experience? It's been seconded uh, by George. Is there any further comments or discussion? Okay, uh, so because we are doing this virtually, this needs to be a roll call vote. Um, and so I will call your names and ask you to vote. Uh, so we'll start with Brewer. Yes. Okay, you have your hand raised. Is there something else you wanted to say? I, I missed it. Yes, but that's okay. So I'll just vote yes. Okay. Uh, Dumont. No. Uh, Ross is yes. Ryan? Yes. Okay, the vote is three to one. The motion prevails. Okay, so we'll move on to question uh, five. What important perspective do you feel you bring to this body. Uh, I see George, we'll start with George. I strongly disagree with this. Um, I don't think it has any place here. Um, and I would, I would move to strike it. Can, can you just elaborate uh, why? Um, I, I just don't understand what perspective means here other than um, it, it's, uh, it, I don't, uh, it, I don't even understand what we're looking for. So maybe I just need to shut up for a moment and have the rest of you explain to me what you're looking for here and why this is an important question. Um, it seems like it's just, uh, you know, tell us, uh, I don't know, tell us about your political philosophy. Tell us about your, your view of the cosmos um, or whatever. And um, so I'll shut up, but I, I think it should be stricken. Okay, Alyssa, I see your hand up. If you could unmute yourself. Thank you. Yes, I think it has elicited, this kind of concept has elicited views of the cosmos that have not been helpful to me in terms of making a decision. So 
I would like to remove question five as well, but um, I like question six with collaborating with a group. And I also like the idea of making it clear rather than talking about like opening and closing statements like we are with the school committee vacancy, that we have a closing question that somehow elicits like, is there something else about you that you want us to know, you know, that wouldn't have been obvious from the CAF that you felt like you didn't answer, you know, well enough. It, it's like a closing statement, but something that it doesn't just say closing statement that allows them to offer this, perhaps if they do have a unique perspective, right, and they do want to talk about the cosmos, then they can put that as their last answer, the one that we don't have written yet, but some kind of question that gets at some anything else you would like us to know about you. Okay. Other thoughts on question five? Uh, Darcy? Um, I like Alyssa's idea about a final question. Um, and I would also vote to keep number five in the event that that didn't happen. Um, uh, yeah, I think that, that num number five is probably also going to be covered by um, number two. Um, so if somebody wants to share what their important perspective is, they could probably get it in number two if they wanted to. George, I see your hand up if you could unmute yourself. I move to strike number five. Okay, George has moved to strike question five. What is What important perspective do you feel you bring to the body? Alyssa, I see your hand up. Second. Okay, so there has been a motion to strike question five. It's been seconded. Uh, just to insert my, my thought here, since I haven't weighed in on this particular question, um, looking at the suite of questions we have, I guess one of my thoughts for every question is what relevant information does this question provide us that is not provided by the others? And I think I agree with what Alyssa and Darcy said, which is that uh, probably the answer of what important perspective do you have would probably come out uh, between questions two and three. Um, and so I'm not 100% sure that it would add anything else, but I, I do like Alyssa's suggestion of adding a question, and I hope after we get through question six, she will make uh, such a proposal to do so. Are there any other comments on question five? Okay, so with that, I will call the vote on the motion to strike question five. Again, because we're virtual, this is a roll call vote. Um, so Dumont. Dumont? No. Okay, uh, Ross is yes. Ryan? Yes. And Brewer? Yes. Okay, the vote is three to one, the motion prevails. So, question six. Uh, at one point, Alyssa had suggested some rewording of question six. Um, I don't know, are you still interested in doing that, Alyssa? I'm, I'm thinking more about flow now as we go along. And so I don't know if maybe this belongs before three or after three, but you know, as we continue to fine tune this, I'm not sure what the flow means, but um, I think it's okay. I mean, the important thing is that it's, they tell us something and describe uh, about an experience they've had. So I'm okay with it, but if somebody can find a way to make it even better, great. Other thoughts on question six? Uh, George, I see your hand up. Can you please unmute yourself? I think it's fine as it is. Um, I think it's short and gets to the point. I don't think we need to fool with it. Darcy, was that a, a raised hand or a stretch? That was me trying to see if my heat pump was working. <laughs> Uh, well, while you're unmuted, do you have any thoughts on question six? Uh, no, I'm fine with it. 
Okay. Uh, so I'm 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 hearing consensus on question six, and so we will maintain that. Are there any additional questions that people would like to add to this list? Alyssa, could you please unmute yourself? I didn't write the question, um, but it's along the lines of, I don't, obviously don't want to phrase it this way. This is your last chance, but um, tell, having you know answered all these questions, what else can you tell us? You know what I mean? It's like you're trying, you're giving people the idea of a closing statement, but these aren't people who've necessarily run for office, so they don't know what a closing statement looks like. Right. So how do we elicit the content of a closing statement by the way we ask the question, given the, the tone and friendliness of the rest of our questions? Does anyone have any particular suggestions for how to word such a question or feel like such a question is unnecessary? Darcy. Um, I actually really like this question, uh, but um, as we saw with our other interviews, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, it would be nice if we got everybody to respond to it, like that it was a real substantive question, like, could you um, or, or even call it a closing statement? Um, and that could include anything that you, uh, any additional information that you want um, the interviewers to know about you. Um, I think there were several people who chose not to say anything at our last set of interviews, right? For what? When we asked them, is there any other I think there was a last question when we were interviewing for planning. Yeah. Um, and there were several, there were a couple of people who said, no, they didn't have anything else to add. So if there is some way that we could make it, um, um, well, I guess if they get, get it ahead of time that hopefully they'll think of other things to. Yeah, I, I will say for the, there was no final question for the planning board interview. The last question that we asked was the, are you comfortable with the time commitment and meeting schedule? Oh, we never asked, do you, would you like to add anything? Nope. I vaguely recall people saying no to some. It, well, so our last two questions were about open meeting law and about the time commitment. Uh, and yeah. most of the interviewees answered either yes or, well, they all answered yes. <laughs> Um, George, I saw your hand up. If you could unmute yourself. I like Alyssa's suggestion. I think this final question should be, a, a question of this nature should be added basically along the lines of, is there anything else, right? Something phrased like this, is there anything else that um, we should know about you or that you would like to tell us about yourself um, that you feel makes you a, a strong candidate? Something like that. I, um, but I agree, it, it, I like this idea of giving them a last chance. Um, so is there anything else that, that uh, you would like to add? I mean, we, we can wordsmith this, but something along that spirit um, that would give them a chance to say no, or maybe say something um, further. Um, I like that idea of giving them that final sort of chance. So we did not do this on the, with the planning board. Um, and uh, I think it might be worth trying it here see how it goes. Remember, this is all a work in progress. Um, I'm really proud of you guys for what we're doing here. Um, but we, and we also go back and revise. It. So here's, I think a good suggestion. Um, I think we should do it. Let's I don't know if we can wordsmith it now, but Evan's pretty good at this. Um, but essentially along the lines of, you know, a last chance for you to tell us something about yourself that hasn't been mentioned, that um, makes you a good candidate, something to that effect. I like that I would I would vote for something like that. Okay. Uh, Alyssa, I see your hand up. If you could unmute yourself. I think what George just said, but we just started by saying, instead of saying, is there, we say, what else would you like us to know? What was the ending part there? George can fill that in. Yeah, George, how'd you end that? Let's see if we can do this in real time. What else would you like us to know about you um, that makes you a strong candidate for the ZBA. Um, uh, that's one 
version. Um, um, I'm fine with that. Yeah. I see Darcy nodding. Alyssa, does this basically get at what you were thinking? Yes. Okay, great. So at this point, you have on your screen um, the interview questions for the Zoning Board of Appeals for the interview uh, that is to, to be scheduled, but likely April 16th. Uh, is there any ad additional questions that people want to add to this? Okay, seeing none, I am going to move that we adopt the interview questions for the Zoning Board of Appeals as amended. Is there a second? A second. Okay, so I moved, George has seconded. Uh, is there any further discussion? Okay, uh, then I am going to call the question. Again, this is a roll call vote. Uh, so Ross votes yes. Ryan? Yes. Uh, Alyssa? Yes, and my comment was simply going to be, even though you're not supposed to do this during a roll call vote, is to say that with the understanding that you were going to, when you start ask before you start asking the questions, do the prefatory remarks along the lines of open meeting law, meeting commitment, blah, 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 just so that the council knows why those aren't in here anymore. Okay, yes. Uh, and Dumont. I guess I have to vote no because I voted against these things. So, no. Okay. So the vote is three to one and the motion prevails. And so we have our interview questions. Um, so the next thing we have to do uh, following on what we did. Uh, so if you looked at the, let me pull back the, uh, the broader document. So I'm going to stop share. And then I'm going to share screen. Uh, so coming back to our agenda, notice I said development of ZBA interview questions and protocol, and that's because there are two more votes we have to take to establish this interview. Um, one is uh, last time we had a vote on uh, whether we were going to put a time limit on how long um, each uh, an interviewee's answer could be. Uh, last time it was three minutes, so I'd like us to vote on how long uh, we want uh, the applicant answers to be now, um, which I guess the first question I have for you, which hopefully is a short question, is do you feel like three minutes was sufficient, too long, too short, and what do you think should be the time? I see George has his hand up, so I'll go to him first. George, if you could please unmute yourself. I think three minutes is fine. I thought it worked well. Um, I thought the interviews went uh, decently and I didn't feel a problem with time. So three minutes seems sufficient. Okay, other thoughts? No other thoughts? Uh, Alyssa. Yes, when you're running for office, you are often given time limits as sort of a test. I don't think we need to do that here. I think we could clarify that it's up to three minutes so people don't feel like they have to use it all up unless we are encouraging them to use it all up because then they say more. So however you want to phrase it is fine with me, but I think three is great. Okay. Darcy, do you feel like three minutes was an appropriate amount of time? Yep. Okay, so by consensus then, I'm not even going to call, we have, we have consensus on this. It is a three minute maximum per answer. Now the second thing we have to do is remember that our process, um, our process allows us, um, gave us the flexibility to determine uh, who asked the question. So we just had OCA ask the questions to allow the possibility that it could be all members of OCA, it could be the chair, it could be just one person who is not the chair um, and so for the planning board interviews, we had a vote to designate the chair to ask all interview questions. So we have to decide whether we want uh, to repeat that with the chair asking all questions or with the full committee asking all questions or with just one person who's not the chair. 
Um, my personal thought on this, and then I will hand it over to George, who has his hand up, is uh, that having just one person ask the questions worked well. Um, but I especially think given these interviews will, uh, will almost certainly occur via Zoom, um, I, I think that whether or not it's the chair, it would likely be useful to have just a single person ask questions. Uh, George, could you, you please unmute yourself? I agree. I thought it went well. Uh, I think it should be a single person. And given the fact that it will be done virtually, I think given the, Evan's experience at doing this, um, we really, um, we know how this can be challenging. And I think he's shown that, that he's been able to handle it very well. So I think A, it should be one person. And I'm very comfortable with having the chair do it, especially under these circumstances. Okay. Uh, Darcy, I see your hand up. Uh, could you please unmute yourself? I, I think that this is a situation where it is a good opportunity to um, sh rotate and share with the rest of the council or the rest of the committee. Um, just going around, each one of us asks a question, not a big deal, it's not that hard to do. Um, Zoom really allows you to do stuff like that. So um, I personally think that this is just one of those situations where, where the council can power share, you know. Okay. Um, Alyssa, do you have thoughts on this? Please unmute yourself. Normally, I don't have a problem with us empowering one person, typically the chair, although not always, right? When we did our previous interviews, we had different people assigned to different things. Um, given the technical difficulties that we had at our last council meeting, even though we'd previously had a, a seamless meeting, um, we had terrible technical difficulties at the beginning of that meeting. We had dif technical difficulties during this meeting, and that didn't include any of these folks who haven't been practicing, although some of them are surely practicing Zoom in other parts of their life. So given how difficult it is simply for Darcy to hit raise hand versus Darcy raising her hand on her camera versus Alyssa having her screen off versus whatever the other people are going to be doing, it is really hard to manage this meeting. And so the only thing I would be willing to do is one, have the chair simply because he's effective at managing the meeting unless he wants somebody else to manage the meeting while he asks the questions. But I do not think this is the time to take turns. And the reason for that, beyond all the technical difficulties I mentioned, is that when you're sitting there in person, it's very easy to look at the person and go, okay, that clearly that person's done talking now. Now you can ask, ask your question. That's very difficult to do via Zoom and it's very difficult to see people's body language and to see when they finish talking and to not have long pauses, et cetera, in between things. I think technically we're just asking for trouble, although I could see having one person kind of manage the meeting and one person ask the questions. Okay, so we have a little bit of a division of opinion. Um, I, I will again restate that I think given the technological situation and given, again, yeah, some of the issues we had even at the beginning of this meeting, we should have just one person. Whether that person is the chair or we designate someone else, I actually don't care. Uh, I'm perfectly comfortable, I think, asking the questions and managing the meeting because it's a fairly simple meeting. Um, but I'm also perfectly fine if we want to uh, give it to someone else. Um, so, Yes, George has his hand up. If you can please unmute yourself. We'd like to make a motion that we um, nominate the chair uh, to ask the questions uh, in at this uh, at this interview. Okay, so George has moved that the, we nominate the chair to ask all interview questions during the interview. Alyssa? Second. Okay. So there has been a motion made and seconded to nominate the chair, ask all interview questions. Is there any further discussion? Okay, with that, I will call the question and we will start with Ryan. Yes. Okay. Brewer? Yes. Dumont? No. And Ross is yes. 
Okay, so the vote is three to one, the motion prevails. Okay, so that's all we need to do for the ZBA interviews. Uh, I will let you all know when we have an official interview date scheduled and some more information about the format. Uh, at this time, uh, yes, Alyssa. So we're saying April 16th right now, and what time are we thinking? Wait, I'm, it, no, it's not April 16th. It should be April 16th. That's the night of our second council meeting about the school committee candidates, because I believed that the chair decided that we were not going to be voting the same night as the interviews. Okay, let me look into that because to be honest, um, the, the poll was sent out to the uh, applicants before our town council president made that decision and uh, I hadn't necessarily realized that. So let me double check that date. I believe that was the date that was most available for all of our interviewees. And again, this was before all of the school committee stuff. Um, but let me double check that then. I thank you for bringing that to my attention. Um, so I will, I will be in touch with everyone about uh, that. Uh, I want to briefly ask if there is any public comment. And so if there are members of the public who are currently watching, you can either, if you are participating uh, from a computer, you can raise your hand. Um, otherwise, you can, is it star? Nine, is that correct, Athena? Yes, star nine on a phone. Okay, so if you are on a phone, please hit star nine. If you're on a computer, you can raise your hand. Okay, seeing no comments from the public, um, I want to Go to minutes. Uh, we agreed last time that we would look on minutes and see if we could approve them by consensus. Um, so I have put the March 9th meeting minutes in there. Uh, is there any uh, modifications that people or amendments to the minutes that people want to make? Uh, Darcy? I think I, I just want to add, oh, damn. Um, I just want to add uh, where it talks about the minutes, um, which I can't get to, um, that we decided to start um, approving our minutes at each meeting, because that's not in the minutes. Okay. So you want to add that? Yes. And uh, to, I don't know, so that's not, what, I don't remember it being in here, right? Uh, oh, here it is. It says, Dumont commented the committee minutes are out of date. Ross explained, it's on, oops. Um, Oh, just moved all over, so I don't know where it is. Uh, Ross explained that he will work on approving minutes over spring break. So it would just go right after that. Okay. Um, so we can do that. Other modifications to the minutes. Okay. Seeing none, we will adopt these minutes by consensus. As amended. As amended, yes. Um, okay, so that is everything uh, from the agenda today. Uh, Darcy was nice enough to submit um, a document to us. Um, I did not put uh, discussion of CIFs on the agenda for today because I wanted to make sure we got through the interviews and so uh, those will be on the agenda for our next meeting uh, which I believe is the 27th. Are there any questions before we adjourn? Okay.
Okay. Uh, so yes, Alyssa. Who is still practicing at flipping between screens and different parts of the screen to find the part that says raise hand. Um, <laughs> you said that our next OCA meeting, you expect at this point to be Monday, April 27th at uh, 30? Our next scheduled regular, oh no wait, we have one for April 13th? What's, oh right, so my apologies, I thought that today was a different, <laughs> this is what happens when you've been in quarantine by yourself for several weeks. I thought that we were already in April, but today is March 30th. So no, our next regularly scheduled OCA meeting is April 13th at 9.30 a.m. Um, and then we should expect a special meeting for the interview sometime in April. So it's April 13th and then April 27th. And did you see the, the, um, the comment from Lynn saying that the, she doesn't think that the 16th will be needed for the school committee vote? Oh, I did not. Thank you for pointing out. So I will, I will work with the interviewees and with Lynn um, to make sure that we find a date um, that doesn't have any conflicts. And I will update you all when we have one. Her, her comment is in the chat box. Yep, I see it now. I didn't have the chat box open. Okay, so with that, I am going to adjourn this meeting at 11.40 a.m. Thank you all for bearing with us. Thank you. Thank you, Evan.